What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 20 in the Math 3 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question gives us this angle theta, which goes from the right side of the x-axis down to this line made by point M. And it says that segment RT, so this one is the initial side, and segment RM is the terminal side where it stops, where it terminates. And it also says that RT and RM are radii of the unit circle. Okay, so that tells me that my radius is one in all of these, centered at the origin R. And we're supposed to figure out the measure of this angle theta if we know that the x coordinate of point M is negative one half. Now this seems like a lot, but it's all gonna boil down to one skill, and that's finding the radian measure of an angle using trigonometry. Now whenever you see a question like this, whether you see radians or degrees, the very first thing you always, always, always need to do is press mode and make sure you're in the right mode between radians and degrees. We need radians, so we're okay for this one. If we needed degrees and we went ahead and solved this problem, it wouldn't go too well for us. We'd end up getting some really wonky numbers that didn't make any sense at all. All right, but um, now let me get out one of my tiny markers and draw just this triangle here, just this right triangle, it says the x-coordinate of point M is negative one-half, and since it says that RM is a radius of the unit circle, I know that this length is one, and then I'm trying to find this angle. So let me go ahead and actually draw this so that it's larger, and we can see what's going on a little better. So this is negative one-half, this is one, this is a right triangle, and we're trying to find this angle. Now at this point, I need to go back to my trig equations. And the first step when I'm looking at a trig equation, I'll call this theta, is from angle theta, which two sides do we either know or we're trying to find? And from angle theta, this is our hypotenuse. The other, uh, the other side of the triangle next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse is the adjacent side. And then the opposite side is if I draw a line from the angle, just keeping it between these other two sides, that's opposite. So we know adjacent and hypotenuse. Now that I know that we're relating the adjacent side and the hypotenuse to this angle, you might have heard this memory trick, Sokatoa. Um, it stands for some old hippie caught another hippie uh, tripping over Ashley because I think the first time that I used this memory trick I had a student named Ashley but I may have been making that name up subconsciously to protect someone's identity but either way um, adjacent hypotenuse that's this AH and then the caught another hippie part of the Sokotoa memory trick says that we're looking at cosine alright so now I know that cosine of the angle, and we don't know the angle, so I called it theta, so this is now cosine of theta equals, and then uh, caught another hippie, says that we're looking for adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And now since we're thinking of this like it's distance, I'm actually going to ignore this negative sign as I plug stuff in. So this is equal to 1 half over 1, also known as just 1 half. So the cosine of some angle theta that we don't know yet equals one half. Now, we have theta, it's trapped inside cosine. If this were a regular equation, I could, if I saw x plus five equals seven, subtract five from both sides to get rid of that. If I saw x divided by four equals two, I could multiply four, multiply four, Either way, whenever I see an equation like this, I'm looking for some inverse or opposite operation. And in fact, there is one such operation that exists for cosine. It's called inverse cosine. So essentially, I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm going to have to use this cosine negative 1 thing. So cosine negative 1, cosine negative 1. So this is the cosine inverse of cosine of theta equals the inverse cosine of one half. And now cosine inverse and regular cosine are gonna cancel. 
which leaves me with theta equals the inverse cosine of one half, which is, and so for cosine inverse, I press second, and then this, cosine inverse of one half, and since I'm in radians, it gives me 1.047. Thank goodness we are almost done. because none of these answer choices match this, and that's when I have to go back to this diagram and remember that I just found the radian measure of this angle, and I also need to find the radian measure of this half a circle. Now, if you remember, the entire circle is two pi, so half the circle would just be pi radians, also known as 3.142. So if I add these together, whether I use my calculator or whatever, I should get 4.189 radians. Now, another way I could have done this um, was added the degrees to 180 degrees and then use the radians formula for that, but I find it easier to just remember that pi represents halfway around the circle when we're looking at radians, so I added 3.142 to the 1.047 that I got for the radian measure of this angle, got 4.189 radians, and that matches choice B.